In the near future, Earth has been totally destroyed by nuclear wars and it is almost impossible to live on it. For this reason, a group of colonists is sent to the moon to establish a base for future colonies. Unfortunately the colonization is a failure, so instead they open mines to get as many resources from the moon as possible. Miners have to work for 20 years, then they are allowed to fly to a planet called Omega, where humanity is currently thriving. The trip takes 75 years, so travelers must be put in cryosleep. 50 years pass since humanity reaches the moon, giving rise to the birth of many children, who are bored of living inside the mines while stuck in a routine. It is now 2257, and there are many rumors going around about a strange object that collided with the moon and left a crater, but nobody is allowed to go near it. One day, a group of kids is approaching the hangar to try to steal a rover to escape from the mines. Whenever they see an adult pass by, they hide behind furniture, but then they quickly come out to keep on arguing about how to proceed. Dylan touches something in the rover to activate it, but instead he accidentally sets off an alarm. While everyone argues, Caleb looks at a little capsule in his hands and thinks about how they got here. It turns out Caleb's father passed away, and since he has no family left because his mother died seven years ago, he'll be sent to Omega where he'll be adopted by a new family. Thanks to cryosleep, he'll still be a kid when he arrives. Caleb doesn't want to leave because all of his friends are here, but his complaints are ignored and he's informed that he'll be leaving in three days after an incoming meteor shower is over. This makes Caleb remember the time his father Michael would teach him not to be scared of the very high ladders around the base. They climb one together and while watching the sky, Michael tells him about the stars and how family may be gone but still with them in spirit, he also wants Caleb to see the crater before he died. Caleb returns to that spot to relive the memory with pure nostalgia and he's soon joined by his best friends Dylan, Borny, and Marcus. They get upset to hear Caleb will leave them soon, but they also know about his father's last wish, so Dylan proposes that they have a last adventure together and sneak out of the base to see the crater. First they steal a bunch of useful tools for the trip, and while they're going through their findings, Caleb is visited by an officer that brings him the little capsule with Michael's ashes. During lunch, the boys realize that to leave they'll need base passcodes. Dylan decides to approach Addison, a girl with no friends because she just moved from Earth and everyone thinks she's weird. Her father is on the science team, meaning she has access to the codes. His approach is rather awkward and a suspicious Addison goes away, so Dylan goes after her and confesses his real intentions. Addison wants adventure too and is envious of the boys' friendship, so she accepts to get them the codes as long as she can come along too. Back to the present, Caleb pulls out a wire from the rover and makes the alarm stop just before lockdown is announced. Now the kids are able to get into the vehicle and Dylan takes over the wheel because he is the only one that knows how to drive it. Caleb punches in the code Addison got them while she decorates the panel with a little bobblehead astronaut, saying it's a tradition from Earth. Caleb thinks about his father's last words as the group crosses a long corridor and finally reaches the outside, where they get to see the moon landscape for the first time. After taking a moment to admire the view and for Marcus to take his heart medicine, they advance down the road and soon encounter a giant structure, which looks beautiful even if it is abandoned. Caleb explains that Michael told him about this, it's a remaining structure from the time humans tried to colonize the moon and failed. After Omega was found, humanity completely forgot about the moon and became this very depressing place. Addison doesn't see the big deal since it's only 20 years and then you get to leave, but she's the daughter of a higher up and doesn't know the truth of the situation. Any little mistake they make like arriving later or getting sick would add more time to their contract, and if someone dies before finishing their 20 years, their next of kin must do their remaining years together with their own. It's all a trap to keep the families working here forever. Addison apologizes for her rudeness and makes it better by sharing stories about Earth, telling the guys about things like trees, the blue sky, and the ocean. After driving for a while, they stop the rover and put on suits to go for a walk. Since Addison comes from a better position, she has a better suit and the boys are shocked at how pretty she looks. They get out of the vehicle and immediately begin fooling around with the gravity, enjoying the way they can jump extra high. They also see Earth for the first time, and they're surprised by how blue it looks. Seeing Earth inspires Addison to teach the boys about baseball. They use stones and sticks to replace regular equipment, but when the rock is hit, it flies away too far because of gravity. The boys don't understand the concept of running through the bases and a disappointed Addison decides to have a moment alone. Feeling nostalgic about her old home, she reaches up as if she could hold Earth in her hand, almost in tears. Suddenly she hears a noise and turns around to discover the boys are using an oxygen tank to fly, making sure they are tied to the rover with a cable while the combination of gravity and tank expulsion pushes them up. Addison thinks this is a dangerous idea that wastes oxygen, but Dylan convinces her to join by implying she's a coward. Soon everyone is playing together, taking turns to see who can go higher. For a few minutes it's all good and fun, but when Borny's turn comes again, his cable breaks and he starts to float around without control. The kids rush to grab more oxygen tanks and use them to go as well, intending to help their friend. They can't really control the trajectory, so there's a lot of funky floating before they start bumping into each other. This crashing allows them to hold onto each other and put together enough weight to fall back to the ground. Since they've wasted so much oxygen, they aren't sure they can make it to the crater now, 
but Caleb points out they could find more at an old outpost from the first settlement. Borny hates the idea because he's heard stories from his brother that said the outpost is full of ghosts. Dylan calls him out and says Borny's brother is a loser, so in return Borny insults Dylan's family. This triggers a fight that Marcus tries to stop, yet he gets involved instead. In the middle of all the screaming, Caleb yells and reminds them this isn't the way to spend their last days together. The boys apologize to each other and reconcile. When they finally arrive at the outpost, the inside is in total darkness. As the group makes their way through a corridor, they suddenly see some human shapes and scream in fear, but when they turn on the lights they realize it's only a bunch of mannequins. Addison notices this isn't an outpost, it's a house that was supposed to serve as a sample of what they would build for the colonization of the moon. As they look around, Dylan shares with Addison the fact his dad ran away from everything, explaining Borny's comments. Caleb sees a mannequin and can't help thinking of his own father, remembering the time he would share stories about his mom. Eventually the kids find oxygen tanks and a bunch of food in the storage, so they decide to spend the night there. After having a feast, they start a fire and Addison tells them more stories about Earth, like all the cultures and belief systems that were lost. She also confesses that her parents got divorced. Her mother left with her brother to Omega, so they'll be in cryosleep for 75 years and Addison can't talk to her brother anymore. Suddenly music starts playing when Borny presses a mysterious button, and they discover the house is controlled by a main computer, making Caleb realize how unfair it is so many nice things like art were abandoned. Furious hate for the system takes over their mood and now the kids decide to start destroying the house. There is nothing they leave untouched, every object except the main computer is smashed, they jump on the bed to have a pillow fight, and they run through every room in the house without a care. Later when most boys are asleep, Addison is still up, and Caleb joins her. He shares that Dylan is his most important friend because he shared his food when Caleb didn't have any, he also worries about what may happen to Dylan after he's gone. Caleb makes Addison promise that she will be Dylan's friend and support him after Caleb leaves. In the morning, the kids get back on the rover, but after a few hours of driving, the vehicle runs out of battery. While the boys argue about what to do, Addison sends out a distress signal, pointing out they have quite a few hours until a rescue team comes because of the lockdown. This is enough time for them to go to the crater on foot and return to be rescued later. The kids put on the suits again and walk for some time until they finally reach the crater, which is huge. Caleb thinks back about Michael and the fact his father made him promise he'd visit the crater one day, so he hopes he's proud. When they look inside, they're shocked to find a glowing structure surrounded by strange pillars. One of these pillars has a phrase that says the past is never far away. There's also a door on the floor that suddenly opens, and the kids take the stairs into a corridor with breathable air. Eventually they find a room with only a fake tree in the middle of a black circle and a phrase talking about skies left behind. Addison recognizes this type of room and starts pressing on the walls like crazy until a panel opens up, revealing a button. When she pushes it, a white light encases the room and they are suddenly transported to Earth, where the boys get to see for the first time in their lives what nature is like and how blue the sky is. Walking around and touching things reveals is only a hologram, but they still find it to be an outstanding experience. Suddenly Caleb finds a star on the floor and the hologram ends as he removes the panel, under which he finds his mother's ashes and a photograph of his parents together. Finally understanding what Michael wanted, Caleb takes the picture for himself and leaves Michael's ashes together with his wife's. Caleb is really upset now because he still doesn't want to leave the moon since this is his true home. However Dylan points out that everyone's dream is to leave this garbage hole and have a good life in Omega, so Caleb shouldn't waste it. His father would definitely not have wanted him too. Suddenly Marcus falls because he's feeling sick, it turns out that being outside decreases his blood pressure. The group helps him leave the building so they can go fetch his medicine, but when they make it outside, they discover the meteor shower has finally started. Borny is terrified, but Caleb gives him a pep talk and soon everyone is running under the shower, carrying Marcus and dodging meteors as they fall around them. The boys are very fast and manage to reach the rover in minutes, but a meteor falls too close to Addison and makes her fall, so now she has to hide behind a rock. When the boys realize she's missing, Borny stays behind to give Marcus his medicine at the rover while Caleb and Dylan go back to rescue Addison. When they reach her, a meteorite hits Dylan and knocks him out. Luckily the suits come with a repair gun and they seal the cracks on Dylan's helmet before they begin running again. The meteors fall too close to them and Caleb falls while carrying Dylan, but Addison helps him up and they reach the rover safely. Unfortunately, they discover the window was broken by a meteor too, and now they have to depend on the little oxygen they have left in their suits. They doubt anyone will come because of the meteor shower, so the kids fall asleep waiting for the oxygen to run out, which means they'll at least die together. A few minutes later, Dylan wakes up and he and Caleb make peace with the fact Caleb is leaving before the lack of air knocks him out. As he closes his eyes, he swears he can hear the sound of people approaching. Sometime later, Caleb wakes up and is devastated to discover he's already been sent to Omega without the chance to say goodbye to his friends. In his bag, he finds the picture of his parents and Addison's bobblehead. A nurse also brings him a digital player, because during the past 75 years, his friends have been sending him messages. Caleb hears them all to learn about their lives, Marcus started a baseball team, 
and Addison started a strike to improve the contracts for the miners. Their efforts were successful and Borney became the lead administrator. Dylan and Addison eventually got married, had kids, and even grandchildren too. Caleb is both sad and happy to hear their friends' voices changing as they grew up without him. He starts a new life on Omega, where a foster family quickly adopts him and offers him a good life. It takes Caleb a while to adapt and make new friends, but once he's learned to move on, he goes looking for Addison's brother. Once he finds him, he gives him the bobblehead and shares the messages, telling him all about the adventure they had together on the moon that day. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.